Welcome back to the Brampton Center for Sports and Entertainment. You see the final score there on your screen. The Brampton Battalion uh, take one here. 7-0 over the St. Mike's Majors. It was all Brampton here. Everything went their way. Camille Kreps, uh, sorry, uh, Wojtek Volsi getting his first career playoff hat trick. And uh, right beside me right now, the president of the Brampton Battalion, certainly beaming right now after a uh, game one victory, but certainly uh, a long way to go, Mike. And uh, certainly uh, Mike Griffith, uh, the president, uh, You've got to be extremely happy, but uh, also pretty down to earth about uh, what's going to be coming up. You know, with the next six games. Well, I think we uh, we maximized our opportunities and uh, created a couple of goals that uh, I think Andy Kyoto on a normal night wouldn't give to us. And uh, uh, the old story of playoffs is that's one game down. Whether the score was two nothing or seven nothing, uh, chalk it up as one. You've got three more to win. Yeah, you definitely have three more to win, and obviously it's going to be very difficult, especially on the road when you have to go to uh, St. Mike's Arena and play one in there, and, uh, you know, uh, anything can happen out there, and uh, certainly anything uh, has happened. Obviously, the Belleville Bulls had a tough time out there. Uh, all four games that uh, St. Mike's won in that series were at home, so obviously it's going to be a tough stretch for it. I, I think uh, everybody knows the St. Mike's Arena is one that uh, creates a lot of problems. It's a, it's a band box. It's a small rink. Uh, we've had a lot of success uh, certainly late in the season. We actually, a lot of people, I'm sure Doug might have touched on it uh, during the game. We really struggled on the road uh, up until probably the last month, and then we started to grind it out, and we'd chatted here probably three, four weeks ago, but the fact our team played a lot of playoff-style hockey coming down the stretch trying to get the uh, Central Division title. So uh, we, we played very well on the road. Uh, Toronto, we took our last two games in there. Um, some great goaltending, and it still comes back at the end of the day. Uh, y you can go on. I think we're, we're very fortunate that we have uh, a very solid group up front, um, uh, four lines that uh, Stan Butler has rolled, done a good job with that. And uh, our, our defense, I think, has is, is continued to improve, but it'll come back at the end of the day when you win it all or win any game in playoffs, goaltending is going to be the factor. Yeah, and I know uh, Brad Topping has uh, played extremely well for you. Obviously, second shutout to, of the playoffs, and uh, you've got to be happy with them. 2.33 goals against average coming in, that's going to drop. His uh, save percentage is going to go up, obviously. Uh, he faced a lot of shots. Not uh, not of the tough variety, and that's uh, I guess that's a credit to the defense. Well, but, you know, it's the old story. I used to... I, unfortunately, I date myself, but I go back to uh, the days of Ken Dryden playing for the Montreal Canadiens when they had a great team, and there were a lot of occasions where Ken Dryden would, in the first period, stone somebody uh, twice in the first eight minutes of the period, and then the Habs would turn it on and come back and win the game 5-1, to one, and he'd say Dryden wasn't a factor. Well, tonight, Tim Brandt, if I recall, in about seven, eight-minute mark of the first period, had a good chance, and he's a very good hockey player, and he fired one, and Topping made a good glove save, and it's almost those you can go back and, and, and recreate the puzzle and say, sometimes it's not how many you stop, it's when you stop them. And, and in this case, when it was a one nothing game, uh, we went in the second period, a couple of good chances for St. Mike's in the power play, bingo, we get the second one, and then you know, it tended to be that we could be, be in a position where our team could uh, wait for a mistake and, then, and pounce on it. And we obviously pounced on, uh, on a few mistakes, and, and, and that took it there. But uh, I think Brad, is, uh, his confidence level obviously has to keep going up, but it also spins off the rest of the team. And uh, the way the ebb and flow go in, in playoff series, that could change very quickly too. And, and that's what you've got to be uh, mentally aware of is that uh, don't get too high with the highs and don't get too low with the lows. I guarantee you that the St. Mike's Majors will go back uh, on the bus tonight and basically say, guess what? We lost one in Brampton, and it doesn't matter what the score was. Let's get ready for Sunday. Yeah, you wipe the you wipe the slate clean, and then uh, you know, obviously, obviously, uh, you know, you just got to go from there. And uh, I just got word from my producer right now that uh, you know you were mentioned off the air that's uh, the mayor of Brampton. And guess what? Uh, I think she's on the line right now, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, John? Do we have uh, do we have the mayor of the Brampton on the line? Hello. Yes. Hello. How are you? I'm right here. Oh yeah. We can we can barely hear you, but uh, is this Mayor Fennel? Yes, it is, and I'm Hi. just calling to say, way to go, Mike. The fans were looking great tonight, and I want to thank you for sending Sarge out to the GO station early in the morning because Brampton loves your team. Uh, I'm going to let Mike answer that because obviously that's directed to him. That's Susan, I, I caught a part of that. Uh, I, I do say on behalf of our organization, you've done a terrific job of... Uh, uh, the election campaign doesn't start in November, but we certainly know that based on your efforts on behalf of the battalion that I would not want to oppose you because uh, you're a juggernaut out there, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. Well, I want to I wanna invite all of the citizens of Brampton to make battalion hockey part of our community activities, whether we go celebrate Canada Day in July and the Santa Claus Parade in December, that every battalion home game is a time for 
friends and fans to come out, say hello to their neighbors, stick around after the game. It is great hockey, and we're just grateful that the team is here. How did they do this seven nothing tonight? I thought that was spectacular. Well, uh, as as you know, what I, I think our uh, I think we better uh, keep our enthusiasm tempered until uh, the series gets a little bit on. But certainly, that's a good start to the uh, series, Mary. You know, uh, uh, I, I know uh, Mayor Fennel, you've uh, got your uh, you know your your fingers in uh, in the hockey pie as well, uh, especially with the NWHL as well. So uh, certainly, well, right you've got to be you've got to well, be extremely excited. Well, we're very excited, but right now I'm uh, I'm trying to clear my schedule to get down Sunday to the St. Mike's Barn. I understand it is a barn. And I'm wondering if Mel Lassman's going to show up to uh, to witness <laughs> the uh, battle with the battalion taken on Toronto because that's what Brampton's all about. Brampton's going to win. Well, is that a challenge? That's a challenge. That's, that's a challenge, <laughs> Mel. Wherever you are, you're the bad boy of Toronto. Well, I'm the good girl of Brampton, and I'm going to try to squeeze in that barn if there's enough seating. And we're going to have a little bit of fun. Well, you know what? Uh, I, I hear mayors in competing cities, uh, you know, like to bet something. So maybe, maybe Listen, you and we've Mayor. Already, we've already uh, seen uh, seen Hazel's team uh, beat by both Brampton uh, teams, and that just has become a tradition <laughs> around here. So it's getting a bit boring. So we're enjoying going into round two in Toronto, one big city at a time. <laughs> Michael, I just have all the confidence in the world in your players. Uh, you've just got the finest organization in the Ontario Hockey League, and. We wish it success each game. Uh, Susan, I didn't catch the last part, but I, I can assure you uh, that the, uh, the the fans in Brampton and the uh, and the people that follow uh, sports in Brampton that uh, Susan Fennell has been a terrific supporter, and uh, she's got a few more tricks up her sleeve that we'll be looking forward to in the next few months as we get ready for next year. But in the interim, thank you again. Uh, it's it's nice that our uh, the Brampton uh, Transit now has Go Battalion Go on the buses instead of Go Leafs Go. I do love the Leafs, but uh, certainly one of my priorities is Go Battalion Go. And uh, we've been very fortunate that there's a lot of good things happening with uh, our relationship with the city of Brampton, and we're certainly hopeful that we have a lot of hockey to play here. Maybe well, let me, let me close with Go Battalion Go. And maybe maybe you can paint the grass, uh, you know a couple of the buses Battalion Green. How about that? Well, I'll tell you, we, we've got a lot of people wearing <laughs> green hair down here at the Brampton Center, and the, uh, the the spirit just keeps continuing, and we've got the best team to be behind. So, uh, again, to the citizens, come on out and support your team and have one heck of a lot of fun. Well, I appreciate that, Mrs. Mayor, and uh, we appreciate the phone call, and uh, uh, we, we hate to leave you, but we're going to have to throw it upstairs right now for some of the thoughts from Doug Anderson, who's sitting up there by himself, who hasn't really had uh, too much to say because we've been hogging the spotlight. Um, uh, Doug, Doug, well, are you... A green beer. Yeah, okay. You, you better. You better. He'll enjoy that. Okay. <laughs> Doug, are you up there? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can sure hear you. It was, uh, you know, I'll tell you something. The support, Mark, that uh, that throughout this community and, and the head office, what the head office has done by the battalion, and Michael, you and I have talked about this on numerous occasions, what it takes to put together an organization. And your organization for the whole uh, issue has been in its infancy. But, Mike, I want to really talk to you about some of the other series that are going on. And, uh, you know, you and I sat down after, uh, after one of the games in the Brampton series, and we talked about the Oshawa Generals team, and they came in against the Ottawa 67s and came up with a big 3-2 victory over the 67s. That's not really a shocker to you, is it, Mike? Well, I, in my opinion going into the playoffs was that if you looked at our conference, uh, you could put the eight teams, uh, including Mississauga, put them into a hat and pull out four, and you were as likely to be uh, the betting guy that, that won the odds because uh, I, I felt that this conference, uh, Ottawa obviously throughout the season yeah. was the dominant team, but after that, Goodness, uh, the one club that, uh, and I, I think that anybody that followed the, the Ontario Hockey League in the Eastern Conference, the Oshawa Generals, were a team that looked to be built to be a very difficult playoff opponent. And that's not to suggest that right. uh, anybody else should be a second fiddle. But I thought that they were going to be a team that was going to be tough. And, and when you come into these two series, uh, forget the 7 nothing tonight. The fact is that this is going to be, uh, you know, expectations are a very tough series, and I think Oshawa will do the same thing uh, in terms of their head-to-head -head -to -head match with the Ottawa 67s. You know, Mark, let me ask you, though, uh, Mr. Heron, let me put you on the spot for one second, because you and I did a, a quite a few Ice Dog games this year together, and i got to ask you, did what you saw from the 67s against the Ice Dogs in the playoffs, was that an eye-opener maybe for the Generals saying, hey, you know what, we can pull one out here? 
Well, you know, it's, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that because uh, Coach uh, Steve Ludzik of the Mississauga Ice Dogs at the time said that, uh, you know, even though that uh, the Ottawa 67s, uh, you know, were on paper the more talented team, they really felt that they could skate with the Ottawa 67s. I mean, the 67s were all over them in that series. Yep. Uh, uh, make no mistake about it, but certainly uh, the Mississauga Ice Dogs were full marks. They really did not give up and they really did not give in to the Ottawa 67s. They had a 3 nothing lead in that uh, game number two and uh, they lost the first one in overtime. That? And uh, and they took uh, they took uh, you know one of the games. So certainly the Oshawa Generals, uh, as as Mike has pointed out, uh, the whole Eastern Conference is wide yeah, open. Absolutely. It's not going to be it's not going to be just one team that's going to come out there and dominate. Every team has a chance to come out of here and represent this conference in the OHL Championship. You know, Mark, I think it's going to be fun to watch. Mark, this is going to be a heck of a, a heck of a playoff. Mark, let me interrupt you. We got a bunch of fans here, Brampton Battalion fans that have been dying. Look at these guys behind us. They've been here and stayed through the whole time. And I'll tell you something. This is the kind of fan reaction that Mike, I know you're expecting from uh, the fans right across Brampton. Mike, I got to ask you one more thing, and and that is the Kitchener Guelph series that's going along. As as a battalion that's come through the Western Conference, and and your team did very well in the Western Conference, going in the playoffs. Um, the Kitchener Guelph series has got to be a classic battle, and are you hoping that the battalion will come up later on with a Mississauga battalion battle, or maybe a Toronto St. Michael's Majors battalion battle? Uh, in terms of our future, I, I think geographically it only makes sense that uh, you'd love to see a Mississauga a Brampton uh, down the road. The the greatest thing in the world would be to see Brampton Mississauga. Of course, I'm going to put alphabetically and and heart desire. Uh, a Brampton one, Mississauga two seed, or it wouldn't be two seed, but if you ever had an uh, Eastern Conference final with uh, Brampton and Mississauga, uh, that would be a real tough problem to find a ticket. I think that, uh, you know, the two franchises would continue to work very hard to try and develop the fan support. Tonight, for example, we had 2,700 people. Trust me, uh, the interest level for this series has been on par, if not greater, than we had two years ago. We played Erie. Uh, we had a little thing called Mother Nature that just kicked the ever living you know what out of us uh, today. And I, I frankly was quite uh, happy to see 2,700 people in here. They certainly got their money's worth. Uh, great entertainment, uh, good value, and and uh, we're expecting that we'll continue just to grow and grow as as it goes on. But you know, you look at Kitchener Guelph. Uh, that is, it's great. There's a terrific hockey history with Kitchener. Uh, in relation to the Ontario Hockey League, the Guelph Storm have come along. I think that'll be a great series. Um, I anticipate that Plymouth and London will be a great series. Uh, but the Kitchener one, just simply because they're 30 miles apart, uh, if there was ever a chance in time that we could play the Mississauga Ice Dogs in, at the end of the playoff run in the Eastern Conference, that would be to me, uh, that, that would, I think all of us would love to see. That would be great for the Ontario Hockey League. Oh, it'd be, yeah, kind of thing. it'd be great for us too. I mean, it'd be it'd be wonderful, uh, especially with the uh, with the telecast rights. Obviously, uh, personal <laughs> standpoint. But anyway, uh, I believe we have a caller on the line right now from uh, Toronto. I, I didn't catch his name or her name, uh, uh, but uh, are, are they on the line right now? Yes, I am. Oh, who's and who's this? It's Paul from Toronto. Calling. Oh, hey, Paul, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm just wondering if St. Mike's has sort of boxed themselves in and building a team built for their small little barn, where they're having all kinds of trouble winning on the road. And not to uh, put you guys on the spot, to correct one thing, the ice in Belleville is the largest in Canada. It is not a small rink, as you guys mentioned at the start of the program. And the games in Belleville were not even close. And uh, as we can see tonight on another large surface, uh, they seem to have a lot of trouble playing away from that little uh, novice rink they call a home. Well, you know, I, I had a chance to catch up, and, and you're, you're probably right, Paul, because I never even saw the dimensions because uh, just because of the, the Belleville Arena. But uh, I do know that I had a chance to catch up with uh, Scott Horvath before the game, and I asked him about, uh, you know, where he likes to play his games. And uh, right off the top, he says, no, I, I, I like to play in the St. Michael's Arena because uh, they are conducive to it. But I, is, is it an advantage, Mike, do you think? Well, I, I think you, you would build your team. If you're going to play half your regular season in, in a very small rink, you would certainly plan that your team can – can go in there and uh, in the perfect mathematical scheme you'd say if we get home ice advantage then we know that we're in a position where we just have to control our home ice and uh, Paul at the end of the day it'll still come down to uh, the, the one factor that uh, St. Mike's has uh, that, that can be the big factor is Andy Kyoto and I mean the goaltender can go on the road and he did not have an Andy Kyoto night tonight uh, the first goal obviously set the tone for us the first goal of a series like that is important it was kind of one of those fluky bounces. It went the right direction, and uh, there was a couple of others, and I'm sure he liked back. 
Andy Kyoto can, can keep that team in any hockey game, and certainly uh, we're going to have our, our hands full going into St. Mike's. And trust me, I, I don't think anybody in our dressing room is thinking that we'll come back here in game three, regardless of what happens in one, and say, isn't this great we have home ice? The fact is we're going to have to play hard. St. Mike's will come back, uh, and, and they'll be full value when they get ready for game two. That's an interesting observation by Paul. Right now we have uh, Brian on the line from Brampton. Brian, uh, what's your question? I, uh, my question is for uh, Mr. Griffin there. I've been a Brampton fan for the past couple of years now, and uh, the attendance is um, really low all the time, it seems. I don't really understand what they're doing for their advertising and that because right now they're playing Toronto 30 miles apart, and it doesn't seem like anyone wants to come out to the game. I just oh. want to know what his comment is on that. My, my response to that, Brian, is that uh, I don't think that the Brampton Battalion and the City of Brampton have ever had more exposure than we've had in the last three days between the Toronto Sun and the uh, Toronto Star and the Fan 590 and radio stations. Sevens but no, you know what, like they don't go out to the local rinks or anything to sponsor their team. They have Brampton Battalion all in the younger ages. They don't go sponsor that or anything. Like, they don't go look at it. I don't, I don't get it. Well, you know what, it, it's a... It's, it's an enigma. We have a very difficult time when our players spend the time we, uh, it, the time we spend in the community and the time we spend with minor hockey players. Uh, the results in terms of that support coming back in the arena has been a, a bit of a mind boggler. In, in other markets, it uh, simply, it's almost an automatic. In Ottawa, they do about 1,500 people a game that are generated through their group sales to minor hockey. And in our case, we probably are fortunate to get about uh, 200 to 250. So. Uh, there's no magic wand, and trust me, if you if you look at St. Mike's, uh, St. Michael's uh, on Game Seven, uh, I think had 1,200 people there for a Game Seven. So the GTA, don't kid yourself, is a very challenging market. Uh, Mississauga, I mean, I think that a lot of people would tell you that you know, you'll, you'll see an announced attendance of Mark 3,000, and you know there's probably 1,700 in the building. Uh, Branta Battalion. It has has forged itself on the basis that what we are going to announce as our attendance is really what it is. And uh, would we like to see 3,500 game? Absolutely. Have we worked very hard to try and get to the point? Absolutely. Um, do we think that we're doing things wrong? No. It's just frankly, it's going to take time. And uh, this series is an indication. There has been a ton of interest and in, uh, from the media in Toronto, and that's one of the biggest benefits of a GTA series is to get the benefit of of the Toronto media telling people. There's, frankly, nobody in Brampton who's a sports fan didn't know that we were playing tonight. I think Mother Nature took care of a lot of the uh, aggravation in terms of trying to get here. Uh, I look forward to Tuesday night. Yeah, I know that uh, obviously the the biggest bugaboo right now, obviously, for this game was the fact that uh, you're right. Mother Nature did not play a part in here. And, uh, you know, you know, all things considered, I think that they had a good attendance tonight. And I thought that the fans were into it and that they really, uh, you know, got into it. And I think as the series goes on, I think we're going to see a lot more uh, fans in the stands, to be honest with you, Mike. But uh, uh, I think we have another caller right now on the line from Brampton who has a question. Uh, caller, are you there right now? I'm here right now. Is this Paul? It is, actually. Hi, Paul. How you doing, buddy? How are you guys doing tonight? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, you got yeah, a question for... Actually, it was an excellent game tonight. Oh, was, well, I mean, if you're a Brampton I, fan, for I sure. What I noticed about Brampton is that a uh, much stronger defensive uh, team than uh, St. Than Mike's had tonight, yeah. obviously. Uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the way that uh, you prepare the guys for the third period, uh, you know, how did you sort of get them up for the third period that you're already up uh, by four goals after the second? Uh, do, do you want to take this question, Doug? When the battalion came out in the second period. They just came out flying, and they knew they had the way the first period went was it was all say, it was all battalion in the early going, and Andy Kyoto stood on his head in the early going. But once the battalion got momentum going and a couple of soft goals, as uh, as Mr. Griffin pointed out earlier, and all of a sudden it's 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 the Camille Krep show in the midway part of the period, and from then on it was all downhill. The majors were just hanging on for dear life, uh, so to speak. It, they they really they didn't make any passing plays through the middle. The battalion cut off the lanes through the middle and they did a good job keeping every major shooter to the outside. So Brad Topping had a good view of every shot that came towards him. But uh, thanks for the call, Paul. Can I give one more question sure. before we hang up? Yeah. Actually, two questions. Number one is, would you have uh, pulled the, uh, the goalie from St. Mike's after the second period, after getting scored on four goals, and yeah. then going to the third and they pulled the goalie in the third, you know, after already being down by six? 
Well, I don't think it really matters at, at that point because Justin Peters is the backup goalie and Andy Kyoto is going to play in the next game. So I don't think at that point it really mattered. Uh, Kyoto is going to play uh, all seven games if it goes that far. One last question before I leave you. Very quick. Uh, how many plates of the boneless wings did you have tonight? I didn't hear a word you said. I'm sorry. Uh, Mark, let's go back down to you. Uh, thanks very much, Doug. And uh, obviously, we're going to have to try to wrap this up. And uh, we really appreciate Mike Griffith coming in here, the president of the Brantford Battalion. Obviously, uh, a great game here for you tonight. And uh, we really appreciate coming on for the phone and show. Hopefully, you come on again. I hope this was fun for you. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, you know what? Uh, the people were trying to cater to the fans. And uh, the ones that sat home tonight and watched the game, uh, we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Great. Thanks very much, Mike. Obviously, uh, there is game number two, Branson Battalion going into Toronto to play the St. Mike's Majors Sunday, April 6th at 2 p.m. live. And then we'll be back here for game three on Tuesday night at 7.30. And as Mike says, hey, listen, come out and enjoy the game if you're a Branson Battalion fan. It is going to be a heck of a series. And the tickets are going fast. The final score here from the Brampton Centre, the Battalion 7, St. Mike's Majors, nothing. And that wraps it up here for Doug Anderson and all the cast and crew here at Rogers Television. Have a safe evening.